The Red Bull High Performance Team work with our athletes to help them push beyond their limits. To do this, we've designed a series of camps to address different aspects of their training. One of the things we're most interested in is the science of performance under pressure. The theory is that by exposing the brain to different kinds of pressure, it increases the ability to better deal with that stress. So in this camp, we designed a series of experiences to push our athletes and take them out of their comfort zones in ways they may have never imagined. The hope that when these athletes are competing in high pressure situations in the future, they are just simply able to perform better. I've never been asked by anyone in my life, who are you? Not your image of like an athlete or whatever, like who are you like when you're alone? Like who is that person? People spend countless amounts of dollars on getting their body fit and ready for, for performance, but a lot of times you bypass thinking about getting your mind fit for whatever you're doing. 99% of what, at least what I do, is, is focusing on my body and my body adapting to things and how my body feels, but realizing that there's like a whole other world out there to explore and, and ways to improve is really exciting. Making big decisions on big stages when there's a lot of consequence really does place a lot of pressure on an individual. It's how you respond under those circumstances that really makes a difference between, you know, sometimes achieving that dream or not. Every athlete is specifically instrumented to look at different markers of stress and performance. And that allows us to turn the tables a little. We are then learning from this group. They are showing us and teaching us what's important, what isn't important, and we can start to collect information that hopefully not only we can share back to them as individuals, share back as a team, but also add to our understanding of this greater conversation around big decisions in big moments. The overarching goal of the breath hold is to show you what's possible. You start up with this idea or a perception of how long you can hold your breath. But we know physiologically that you can go for far longer. I needed to stare at something for me to create stillness in my mind, and that was just looking straight down to the pool. And then from there, uh, we, they threw in another uh, curveball. You're going to take a piece of paper here. You're going to stick it in there. And you're going to black out your mask. After you've blacked out your mask so you can't see, then we're going to give your team an object. The object was in front of us, there was a bag, we had to pull pieces out, but because you know, you're blinded, it's totally a different story. Now you're thinking, I can't breathe as much if you're, if you're just panicking and whatnot. So at the end of the day, overall, you just have to stay concentrated. And even though you can't see, it's kind of almost like you being in the ocean where it's completely dark. You just got to relax, remember to breathe, and then just take your time with it. Three hours later, they're looking at three, maybe four, four and a half minutes. You came in thinking you could only do this. You come out showing yourself you can do far more. And that's the conversation that we want to elicit in the group. For us, fear is not a bad thing, it's actually a tool, it's a trigger. It brings you up, and in many cases, it, you need to be brought up to get ready to do what it is you're about to do. I knew I was scared of snakes, but um, I've never actually put myself in a position where I had to be near them. I'm kind of glad that I couldn't see. I put my hand right on the snake fairly early on, and that's where I really lost it. Like. At first, I, I was doing my deep breaths, and I almost didn't really sink in what I was doing. Apparently, I, I kind of charged. Everyone else was taking their time, and I just wanted to get through there. My heart rate went from sitting down beforehand at 37 to 170 while I was just crawling in there. Learning to face that kind of primal fear and having the experience of feeling probably the most fear I've felt and overcoming it and how amazing that feels afterwards just gives us the confidence to do that again and again. All of the athletes were challenged by the snakes. It's a primal fear for most humans. But up next was a test that mixed skill, speed and for most of the athletes another unfamiliar environment. Each scenario is developed with a particular end in mind. How do we put them under stress? How do we force 
that internal dialogue of doubt conversation and then how do we then use that as a training opportunity. never been in a car like that, like you barely touch the gas pedal and you're just like taking off super fast. Being in this like very enclosed space where it's just you and there's no one else, there's no one talking to you, no one like in your eyesight, and to have an activity that can put you in that space, that's like active meditation for me. So my heart rate was actually relatively low when I was doing that activity, like I was so focused and so in the zone of what I was doing that yeah, zero distraction. Getting into this sort of optimal state is part of what building resilience is all about. But the next experience we designed was going to test these athletes again in a completely different way. Something none of them had ever tried before. These are extremes. Laughing and crying. Like we were saying, find your place and find your moment that triggers that emotion and just push it and push it and push it. And then Switch, okay? All right, cry guys, cry. Actually getting up in front of a crowd and really letting go and actually showing emotions, laughing and crying and jumping around screaming, all these energy exercises and all these different things, I felt like that to me was by far the hardest thing ever. Switch, laugh, laugh, that was close man. <laughs> I really felt like I was really self-connected with myself and my energy was balanced and everything was, was aligned. Many of the athletes said that experience was far tougher than the, the morning with the snakes. And that's interesting when you think about it. You're up on stage, you're just doing some activity that they've given you. There's no real threat or danger externally. So the conversation is always what's going on up here in the brain. The way I operate is just go, and and I think this camp has really taught me to be more methodical and slow things down and, and think about it. I think what I'm going to be taking away is this internal energy detector, possibly. It really is all mental. It, you just can't assume things. You have to just go in it with things that we learn, short-term goals, self-awareness, and just always breathing and relaxing when you're actually put under this pressure, how do you perform? And in your mind, you might have this vision of who you are and how you perform, but you don't really know until you're in that situation. It can be validating and, and really comforting and also teaching you how to be a better you. Like, I'm gonna take this energy and I'm gonna embrace it every day, all day for the rest of my life. Like, I feel like what I've learned this week is gonna be with me for the rest of my life. This week has been much more than just a series of experiences for the athletes. We've learned a lot and the biometric data we gathered is already showing us how controlled exposure to new and different types of pressure can help build resiliency in these athletes. As they progress through the week, the athletes continue to demonstrate greater capacity to manage pressure as indicated by such measures as heart rate. On a qualitative level, the athletes all felt the experiences this week help better prepare them for the stresses of competition. And if they can apply these physical and mental learnings, it could just be the difference it takes to push their own limits and stay at the top of their game.